in many cases, effective proofing of the shoulders will be reliant upon certain patterns, such as arm patterns, shoulder and scapular patterns that you may or may not be familiar with. Many of these patterns are introduced in their isolated form into some of the work that we do generally with um, the programming, whether that's with me one-to-one -one or with um, the standardized programming, such as things as you know teacups and the budding and blooming patterns and things like this. Um, coming down to standard scapular rotations, opposite rotations and things. We'll be using a few different modalities, um, which basically means we'll be working with some of the hands against the floor for shoulder proofing, the hands against the hands or against the body, as well as open in space. Um, the main things we'll be focusing on are three things, which is essentially um, mobilization of the scapula, of the general you know, shoulder complex, as well as some of the rotator cuffs as well, but ultimately not so specific because the idea again of these uh, proofing principles is that they're a step away from the standardized types of mobility routines with the sets, with the reps, and it's more explorative to prove how you feel that particular day. So once again, as was mentioned with the wrist and finger proofing, we are not working with specific strength movements or mobility development movements um, that are designed to help increase your range or develop stabilization in the shoulders. So if you still require that as part of your training, if it's not still programmed in your practice or if it's not in your practice, it's something that you will have to um, incorporate from your knowledge of previous phases or other programs that you've been working with uh, with me or likewise you can request them directly for myself if you're working with me one-to-one. -one. Um, I'll apologize in advance for perhaps some of the crappy camera angles because I'll be up and down and moving through space so if I get cut off at some point it's just the way it is you have to use your imagination. We're gonna start standing and we're gonna start with the scapula. From the scapula I work firstly with types of scapular circles. Now the reason I'm starting with the scapula is because it's more towards the center of the movement. Anything else that moves is going to come from the scapula here. So I'm just proofing reverse rotations, forward rotations, opposite rotations, not incorporating the thoracic, incorporating the thoracic, incorporating the pelvis, not incorporating the pelvis, and I am also moving through space. I encourage you to move through space as you're exploring the shoulders because forces work differently, especially with centrifugal force. If I'm turning, for example, and then turning the shoulder, it's different if I just stand here doing this. So work with these ideas. You can let the arms start to move more free flowing. I'm not adding any deliberate arm movement. It's just as a result of the arm moving. And I'm really digging in. I can internally rotate to the front, externally rotate to the back, which emphasizes the range that is achieved through the scapula. Not stopping, I keep moving. I can incorporate the neck if I need to. I can incorporate some of the spine if it feels appropriate. From here, from working with the shoulders, I then start to add maybe some of the arm patterns. So classic teacups moving through space. I can cross overhead or I can choose not to. I can even just come down towards the side here. I'm going forward, backwards. This is synchronized. And we can also work unsynchronized. However, these synchronized, unsynchronized patterns are a separate project. So if you haven't studied them, they may not be available to you. So just some basic arm patterns, some waves, working one shoulder backwards, forwards. Always try to reverse the pattern. So if I do a pattern this way, I pull it back again. I pull it back, I pull it back again. I'm working through just here with the shoulders. Now, I can quite simply take the other hand. I can link and bring them overhead and I can work with types of overhead scapular rotations. Again, which is a separate tool, but now more free flowing. I'm working with elevation and depression. I can even just take the forearms in this way. Still working with the scapula. 
forward and backwards. I can work with rotations of the hands in space, affecting the shoulders and the scapula. And now staying with the scapula, I can come into the floor and I can work these ideas on all fours. So fundamental protraction and retraction, like an on the knee scap push up. But then of course, working with the rotations forward and backwards, and also with alternate scap rotations, never stopping, keep moving, coming backwards. I can work with bends in the elbows, affecting the shoulders, flexion, extension, and then I can also work supine as well. I can work with my backside on the floor, be more sensitive towards the shoulders and perhaps go in to some more odd ranges, externally, internally rotating the hands. And I can also, of course, add my weight as well. Retraction, retraction, forward circles, reverse circles, opposite scat rotations. And I'm working quite quickly here, but you can, of course, slow it down. Again, flexion, extension is possible. Now working into the scapula in a bit more of a loaded form, you can come into a pike position, like the down dog position, and working just with the scap in a loaded form. So again, rotations forward, backwards, opposite, flexion, extension and again as I said I'm working quickly but you can work slower here you can work with more body weight in the prone position working more directly into the shoulders you can simply explore more controlled end range rotations so this can work with both arms at the same time. You can just track down your scapula across the back and just feel if it's gliding nicely, if there's any clicks and grinds. If you find a lot of clicking across the anterior shoulder here, it can be the simple case that there's some tension in the anterior shoulder, which is quite common coming up through the long head of the bicep and into the anterior shoulder. In some cases, a few minutes with some foam rolling across the um, anterior deltoid and also the, the, the long by head, the tendon of the long head biceps um, can help alleviate some of these and immediately give you more of the freedom in the glenohumeral joint. So I'm leading up with the thumb and it's not so concentrated end range like the isolated um, end range circles, but I am respecting the idea, walking back, opening out. I may even externally rotate here. Again, proofing. Standing or seated, it doesn't matter. And then, if you have the appropriate patterns, we work with some more dynamic work. Your standard walking pattern, catching, 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 catching. Throwing in the rotations, figure eight, where they're relevant. Now I can do this in two ways. I can completely let the arms completely dead so I can feel the blood rushing through, or I can add more of the control from the scapula to direct the movement or the control from the shoulders. And again, from the outside, it looks completely the same. This is completely dead arms. And then more guiding from the scapula and the shoulder as it tightens up. Let one arm fly, let the other arm fly. Work with the kidney taps. I can spend a few moments with these patterns using the centrifugal force to fill the arms with blood. Now from this point, in terms of the actual um, the shoulders themselves, one of the easiest tools 
is just the waves. We do a medial to a lateral wave. Again, this is a separate project, but we can take the basic principles here. So I'm working from the scapula following through to the shoulders from the inside out. I can continue this in whichever plane I'm looking for. I can work in the, the sagittal plane here. I can work here. I can work unsynchronized. I can even work the opposite direction, which means I'm going out through the fingers. So it's a lateral pattern going outwards. Again, if you're confused because you haven't studied these patterns, no worries. Just make it up. You keep the arms moving, but essentially now, instead of throwing the arms, I'm working from the arms. It comes from the scapula, but then it's extended out with control. Spending two or three minutes with these types of frames will bring a lot of blood into the shoulders, which is where we're looking for it to be. Still working, I can make the circles bigger, and as you can see, it incorporates nicely back into the teacups pattern. One of the last thing I'll do is some my more dynamic type of rotator cuff stimulation. So these patterns are very quite simple. We're essentially using wind resistance for the uh, rotator cuffs. So just starting here. We're going to just work with essentially an external rotation, but it also has an internal rotation because I'm keeping the wave. And there's air resistance both ways. And essentially, you're looking to imagine that there is a wooden rod that goes through elbow to elbow. So it's stuck in this position and it's just twisting here on this rod. And I just keep it light. The scapula is set. Everything's pulled in, it's kept in, it's not completely tense, but it's there. And I'm working through my full range. If you are counting, you might go to around 50 reps, but normally you just keep moving until it starts to fill with the blood. As soon as you can feel a bit of the bump, you can work in the opposite direction here. You work with the barn doors opening and closing. So it's quite simple. Again, working with the air resistance. And then one of the last movements you can work with as well is unilateral, which is the opening and closing here in the sagittal plane. And again, you can hold it, it really doesn't matter. Kind of looks like you're, there's a really bad smell and you're just waving it away. But you can also work with both. This is no problem. And again, finishing this off with some of the shoulder patterns and a little bit of a shake to finish. So five minutes, perhaps even longer, up to 10 minutes, proofing the shoulders will set you up very nicely from any for any consequential handstand work, locomotion work and things like this, even upper body strength and mobility. And um, if you are, using these frames in preparation for upper body um, strength work. I would also advise then just adding um, a few more strength oriented movements that mimic some of the elements of the patterns you're going to be performing. So for example, um, do then incorporate maybe just, you know, one or two pull-ups or something like this, just some slow reps, um, just to, to, to grease the certain patterns you're gonna be moving. And likewise, if I'm going to be working with you know, overhead pushing, handstand push-ups, I will just work through a few pike handstand push-ups. So at the point in which I've been doing the loading for the shoulders and the rotations, I might drop down a few times, lock the position in, come up through the top, load, bring it down, keeping the protracted form, coming up. Likewise, if I'm gonna be pushing to the floor, I'll keep the protracted form and work down, work the scap, work down. And likewise, again, I can work the scap and go into like a planche lean. I'm working planche lean work. And likewise, for the anterior chain as well, 
for shoulder extension. I'm working here. And then I might put myself up into an AG, walk from left to right, or even just a table, shifting the weight, mapping the wrists in this position, internal, external as well. So keep that in mind and incorporate that where necessary into your proofing practice.